Hi. The tragic death of 22 uniformed soldiers in Chhattisgarh's Barstar region is my newsworthy focus tonight. It happened two days ago and has vanished from the headlines already. Over the next few minutes, I'll try and give you a real gritty sense of what truly happened, the mistakes that were repeated and the anger among sections of CRPF personnel. Now we have sourced and fact-checked this information from multiple sources, including people on the ground, CRPF personnel, and those keeping track of the situation. Let's go step by step. On the 3rd of April, a joint team of security forces was drawn in for an operation. These were about 1,500 personnel. They were drawn from various companies, the paramilitary CRPF, also its elite jungle warfare unit called the Cobra Commandos, uh, Cobra is a short form for Commando Battalion for Resolute Action. There was also the District Reserve Guard and the Chhattisgarh Police. Now, one of the groups, about 380 in number, were ambushed by Naxals in the forest along Bijapur and Sukma. This is South Chhattisgarh, heavily forested. They were surrounded and they faced heavy fire. From the ground, we are learning that security personnel were actually surprised by the firepower that was used by the Naxals. The encounter lasted for about three to four hours. The reinforcements for the party that was caught in the ambush could not really come in time. The Naxals took away weapons. There are reports of AK-47s, SLRs, bulletproof jackets, radio sets, even shoes being taken away. I'm not saying it happened exactly like this in the current case, but it has happened in the past. Injured soldiers are sometimes killed brutally and their weapons, shoes, etc. are removed from their bodies and taken away by the Naxals. Now, the CRPF men did fight valiantly. Many picked the weapons off the bodies of their slain officers, their fellow colleagues, the splinter groups of this 380 or so fired weapons, grenade launchers that actually led to the retreat. 22 is not a small number, but the casualty rate could have been higher considering this was such a large contingent. This team of security personnel was in these heavily forested jungles looking for a man called Hidma when they came under this attack. He's almost a mythical commander of the People's Liberation Guerrilla Army Battalion 1. This particular battalion operates in districts of South Pastar, Bijapur, Sukhma and Dantewara. He is believed to have led some of the worst attacks against security forces in this area. In 2010, in Tarmetla, when 75 CRPF Jawans and a state policeman were killed, or in 2013, that attack which wiped out the Congress leadership of Chhattisgarh, to also more recent ones. Now, there are two possibilities or analysis according to counterinsurgency experts. One, this was a trap. What do I mean when I say that? That the intelligence itself was an elaborate trap laid out to get the troops into this zone. In fact, a senior security officer in Chhattisgarh told Indian Express that it's an open secret that the Maoists know we're listening to their code. Or number two, that when you have a large contingent of security forces, it is going to be conspicuous. It is going to be big. It is going to be unwieldy. And the entire operation is unlikely to remain a secret. There are reports that three senior officers from Delhi had been camping in the area since three weeks for this particular operation. Past experience tells us all of this information gets to these Naxal groups fairly quickly through local informants. Now, I want to underline here that there is a pattern and it would be foolish not to notice it because we're obviously making some mistakes again and again. The aftermath is also strikingly similar. Our vocabulary is similar. We offer the same condolences and lay the same wreaths. Let me take you through some similarities between incidents where security personnel have died at the hands of Maoists. Most attacks or many attacks play out in a similar way. Number one, there's some intelligence-based input on which a search operation is planned or movements of targets are tracked. Number two, the intelligence sometimes fails. The men are caught unaware. 
in what is Maoist territory. Number three, soldiers in the aftermath will often tell reporters of running helter-skelter leading to large number of casualties. Number four are images of bodies of Javans being retrieved by choppers. Very similar. Number five, a day or two after, there is often talk of intelligence failure or poor strategy or the attack happening because there was a change of units or SOPs or standard operating procedures being violated. Or like in this case, when village after village was empty, which should have been a sign of abnormality, but was ignored. Many of these attacks, I think number six, happened between March and July before the monsoons. Number seven, what also follows is politicians and officers denying shortcomings. Number eight, a committee is formed to investigate what went wrong. And number nine, that, that report is rarely made public. Let me give you two examples. The Ram Mohan probe report that was looking into failures of the 2010 Dantewara ambush, it has never been made public. The center rejected an RTI plea for a copy of the report on security grounds. The second example, the 2013 attack in which many Congress leaders were killed, that case was given to the NIA. And the last we know is an SIT was formed by the Congress government that came to power in 2019. And in 2020, the NIA told a special court in Jagdalpur that their probe was in advanced stages, mark you it seven years later. These reports are seldom made available to mid and junior level officers either. Officials are often reshuffled. Many times an IPS official will be parachuted into the CRPF. Things are really moved around just enough. A quick bit of context and information. The DIG in charge of the 2010 Dantewara operation where we lost 76 men, one of the worst casualties by any security forces and the current 2021 Bastar operation was run by the same man. Meanwhile, the Naxals go away with weapons, possibly some casualties, and a sense that they have managed to defeat the might of the state once again. So in this case, when the question was asked, was this ambush and intelligence failure? The Director General of CRPF said no, but forces were surprised and ambushed. The Inspector General of Police, the Bastar Range, said there was no ambush at all. I'm leaving it to your judgment to make sense of both these statements. In fact, the DG added that this was a good, even-handed fight and not less than 25 to 30 casualties on the Maoist side was actually offered as a proof of operational success. Multiple reports are saying that only one body was found in that of a Maoist woman. Now, some of you may feel this is all great in hindsight. Just for context, since 2001, 1,300 security personnel have died in Chhattisgarh. One third are from the CRPF. One is hearing of dismay and some anger among CRPF cadre on the ground. Remember, they have fought left-wing extremism for decades now. They're invested in this force. Very often the case is an IPS officer on deputation who has relatively, one could say, less skin in the game is sent on deputation. Now in 2010, when the Manmohan Singh government was in power, this was called the biggest internal security challenge. In the years after, when the Modi government came in power, one often heard that the Naxal problem would be solved in two odd years or so. In the last two decades, Maoist violence has claimed the lives of over 2,700 security personnel, and I'm going by a 2017 report. I'm going to stop here. The aim of this video was to give you a sense of what really happened and why. I'd urge any one of you who's interested in going deeper into the reasons for Naxal violence and why it still continues to challenge the writ of the state to look up a book called Hello Bastar by Rahul Pandita. I have it here. I've used some of this or some of these learnings from this book in my video. My name is Anubha Bosle. This is Newsworthy. I'd urge you to check out our handle Newsworthy with AB on Instagram. And if you're on Facebook or YouTube, we go by my name, Anupha Bhosle. 
tell us if you'd like to know more, maybe a primer on the Naxal violence. I also realize that we've used the words Maoist and Naxals interchangeably. We could perhaps explain that if you're interested in a video. Uh, we leave it here, drop us a comment and tell us what you'd like to us to focus about. Uh, from my entire team here, thank you for your time.